Hello, and welcome to an unboxing of Malign Providence, as labeled on the box, a Centipede Press unboxing. Although the sticker on the side says that it is an unsigned copy, whereas this should be signed copy 68. A little styrofoam to fill up some of the packaging, because Jared likes to use, or reuse, I should say, uh, packaging materials as he gets them, which I am A-OK -okay with. Uh, there's also a bonus book in here that I purchased from John Palin's collection, uh, as well as a little uh, photo. It's like a sticker. Uh, you know, it's got the backing like I could take it off as a sticker. I don't know what that's from, but sometimes you get little goodies in it, so very cool. Anyways, there's also a bonus book, which is The Jaguar Hunter by Lucius Shepard, uh, as published by Arkham House uh, back in the 80s. So, uh, Malign Providence here by Jeffrey Thomas. Not Jeffrey Thomas. Jonathan Thomas got uh, punk town on my mind. Uh, so, it's been described by Jared as being an homage to Arkham House. So, I was looking at John Palin's collection. Uh, John Palin, may he rest in peace. Uh, his collection of books is being handled by Jared at Centipede Press, uh, which included the Jaguar Hunter from Arkham House. And I figure, hey, what better way the uh, honor in homage to Arkham House than buying an actual Arkham House title? I apologize if I sound a little sick. It's because I am sick. So uh, hopefully I don't sound as bad as I think I sound. But anyways, let's start with the older title first. So Lucius Shepard, writer of... Kind of magical realism and weird fiction had uh, a collection here, uh, art by J.K. Potter. Look at that. Uh, had a collection here published in the '80s by Arkham House, uh, which you know, nice little cloth binding. That's more of like a paperish kind of feels paperish. Nice little hardcover, and it's signed. How about that? For John, best wishes, Lucia Shepard, 1987, from somewhere? Something Connecticut? Maybe? I don't know. J.K. Potter has the illustrations for the Michael Bishop. Uh, Arkham, Arkham House was formed back in the late 30s to publish the works of small, independent, and uh, I think he's kind of under the radar author uh, by the name of like H.P. Lovecraft or something. I don't know. Not sure if he has that much influence in the genre. Uh, I kid, of course. I, I kid, of course, about him being, you know, very influential. Uh, but it was actually founded back in 39 after his passing to collect uh, hardcover editions of his tales. Uh, so, you know, H.P. Lovecraft was very much exclusively published in pulp magazines. And so they founded Arkham House to compile his works. So we got some J.K. Potter artwork throughout. I've, I've actually never read any Lucia Shepard. Uh, he passed away almost 10 years ago, and I know Subterranean Press published several of his titles, uh, including a best of, which I think I have the best of, but I haven't actually, uh, I haven't dived into that one yet. Anyways, that is the Jaguar Hunter, uh, signed to John Palin from his personal collection, uh, Palin passed away uh, two years now. It Time is irrelevant the past few years, so I'm not sure. Um, but as I said, his personal collection of short of books, whether it be short story collections, novels, magazines, everything uh, is being handled by Jared at Centipede Press. Uh, so if you go over, it's, it's called the Scratch and Dent page, but the titles like the Jaguar Hunter here are in pretty darn good condition. I purchased a bunch of Palin titles, uh, his collection over the past year, year and a half, including a bunch of Tim Powers. But there's still a bunch of titles on there uh, for a lot of very good prices. Uh, Palin was the editor of many fantastic magazines and collections over the years. Uh, he was very closely connected with Centipede Press editing the uh, their weird fiction review. But uh, in his passing, we've been having to collect his own books. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just admiring the artwork here. David Ho artwork. 
as I uh, kind of glance at this. Very Lovecraftian, which kind of goes to the whole Arkham House theme. Uh, malign providence, possibly being a you know a play on divine providence or an ordained event, but also I believe actually taking place in Providence, Rhode Island, which is where H.P. Lovecraft was born. So, you know, uh, beautiful stamping on the book, and I noticed the back. Look at the back cover; that is gorgeous. Wow. Uh, Centipede Press has been knocking it out of the park. They have a very, like, nice cloth-bound style here. Apologize, our pasty white hands leave markings on it. But a nice little microfiber cloth cleans that right off. they got a very simple style that you'll see uh, within a lot of their books, which I've unboxed on the channels. On the channel, Jonathan Thomas, The Malign Providence Riffs on the Mythos, of course, being the H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's Mythos. The Cthulhu Mythos. Uh, so, nice illustrated end papers. Uh, there is interior artwork. I mean, this right here is just straight up from David Ho's dust jacket. But there is interior artwork uh, by Francesco, Francesco Gianni. That looks like a David Ho one as well. Short fiction by Jonathan Thomas. I apologize, Jonathan Thomas. I am not familiar uh, with your works. Look at the cover treatment on that little, on the copyright page, though. I love that. That's awesome. But... Uh, the description that Jared gave online is that a lot of these are very much Lovecraftian tales. That must be one of Gianni's pieces, because that does not match David Ho's art style. So, Moby Mart After Midnight. I don't know if it all take place in Providence, but presumably some do, because I know they actually mentioned that the Providence in Malign Providence was a reference to Providence, Rhode Island. Which, once again, is that H.P. Lovecraft connection. Uh... Listen, I'm not familiar with Jeffrey Thomas. Oh my God, Jonathan Thomas. Sorry, Jonathan Thomas. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where if Jared gives you the seal of approval, I got to check it out. Because Jared knows what he is doing. He is a one-man publishing machine. But he does some pretty damn good collections. Uh, so yeah, very nice. I, I don't have any... I don't know that I have any other Arkham House n titles to compare it to other than... The Jaguar Hunter here. But, I mean, you know, it's it's very much in the style of regular Centipede Press titles. But, you know, he, he likens it to uh, Arkham House titles. In the back, we have our signature page, which is, once again, on it's backed by David Ho's artwork there. Uh, so this, here we go, is our signature page, number 68, right there. It is signed by Jonathan Thomas, uh, David Ho, and Francesco Gianni on the bottom Simply gorgeous. And I believe the signed copies are sold out, which tends to happen with a lot of the Centipede Press titles. Uh, but unsigned copies are still available. And, uh, I mean, even with unsigned copies, you get a slight discount over the signed copies usually. Sometimes it's, you know, just as much as low as a buck. Sometimes it's more like 40 bucks uh, for some of the lar larger titles like Babel 17 that was uh, just released as well, uh, but you get a very quali high quality book. Jared is one of the best in the small press community, primarily focusing on horror such as this, but he de delves into science fiction or sword and fa uh, sorcery fantasy as well. But man, what quality books he puts out. Like I said, signed copies are sold out, uh, but there are still signed copies of like Maynard's House on Centipede Press's site, and he's Got a couple other exciting titles coming up as well. So please subscribe to the Centipede Press newsletter if you want to buy some of these signed copies because uh, they go quickly. Unsigned copies are still just as beautiful, but, uh, you know, just not signed. Or in the case of Babel 17, not numbered. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.